Today I'm setting the record straight on the true relationship between insulin resistance and weight loss. Here we go. Now before we get too far, let's talk about what insulin resistance is and how it could impact your ability to lose weight. So when we eat food, an organ in our body called the pancreas secretes insulin with the main job of taking sugar out of the bloodstream and delivering it to cells where it can be used for energy. Now when someone is more resistant to insulin, basically what this means is that the body's cells don't respond as well to insulin and they generally go higher higher and stay higher than compared to a normal person. And as a result, the glucose uptake in those cells is impaired. The liver, which is gonna be another organ in your body that stores glucose, may release more. And as I mentioned before, you're gonna produce more insulin. Now, insulin resistance can happen for quite a few different reasons. There's family history as well as medications, but also lack of exercise and excess body weight. Speaking of body weight, insulin resistance usually increases with more weight gain and is a sign that a person may develop type 2 diabetes down the line, but not always. So you may be thinking, is this what's stopping me or my nutrition clients from losing weight? And if so, what is the best way to become more sensitive to insulin, which is going to be the opposite of resistance, so that you can burn fat and lose weight and keep it off for good? Now here's where the confusion starts, because even if you are resistant to insulin, it doesn't mean that you can't lose weight. In fact, you really shouldn't be worried about where your insulin levels are at at any given time, because that metric is not the primary driver of the results you're looking for. And that's because weight loss comes down to energy balance. It's much less dependent on how much carbs you eat and even less on what your insulin levels are like, which may be hard to believe, but this is what the science shows. And there's even more practical examples of this. Think of any athlete that's eating a lot of carbohydrates. They would not look like that if insulin was the problem, but you may need a little more convincing. So let's dive into a little bit more about blood sugar. We know that insulin is responsible for regulating our blood sugar levels. And this is because the ideal blood sugar level or what's considered normal is gonna be between four to seven millimoles per liter or 80 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. What is considered normal blood sugar is gonna be similar across the world, but there's different units of measurement. Now for healthy individuals, you don't need to track how much sugar is in your bloodstream because your body regulates that for you, unless of course you have type one or type two diabetes. But generally these blood sugar levels spike after eating a meal and come back down to normal baseline levels, regardless of how much carbohydrate you're eating. These levels come down, especially in healthy people. Now, one thing to keep in mind though is large fluctuations of blood sugar throughout the day can result in having energy spikes and crashes, but this generally can be fixed by eating a mixed high quality diet that'll keep your energy levels more balanced. And what this looks like for most people is choosing more higher quality sources of carbohydrates like whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, typically things that contain fiber and take longer to digest. So the glucose is releasing to the bloodstream slower, which is going to be the opposite of more simple carbohydrate sources like refined grains and processed sugar that are absorbed in the bloodstream very quickly, leading to big spikes in blood sugar levels. And that's where insulin comes in to bring your blood sugar levels back to normal. And this always happens during the period of time right after you eat. With all that said, it doesn't mean that eating carbohydrates and having a blood sugar spike is what's stopping you from losing weight. And later on in this video, I'll tell you why insulin may not be the cause either. Now, when it comes to carbohydrates and insulin, carbohydrates are a great source of energy for your body because it's super easy for our bodies to get the energy. Either we're taking it from our glycogen stores in our muscle or our liver or from your bloodstream, which is gonna be very important for active individuals or people that play a lot of sports because your body's gonna require require enough of this energy to perform well. Both simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates are gonna give your body a quick source of energy. Although in most cases, complex carbohydrates, since they contain fiber, are going to be a more healthy addition to your overall diet. Now, trendy low carbohydrate diets that tell you to remove all of these carbohydrates can help you lose weight, but it's not because of the absence of carbohydrates. Let me explain. Weight gain occurs when you eat too many calories. You're consuming too much overall food, which can be from refined carbohydrates and sugar, but that's generally because they're easier to overconsume. Think foods like soda and chips, cookies and cake, which will also contain fat as well. I'm not playing favorites here. But since these foods are highly processed, it makes them very palatable and easy to overconsume, especially in one sitting. And they also offer very little nutritional value. So outside of the calories, they don't offer you much health promoting benefits. With that being said, they don't cause weight gain because they have carbohydrates in them. It's because they add more calories 
calories to your diet. And those calories matter because you can be on a very low carbohydrate diet and still gain weight. And you can eat plenty of good carbohydrate sources and lose weight. Carbohydrates and insulin levels are so often labeled as the enemy when it comes to weight loss. And it stems from the fact that insulin actually prevents the process of lipolysis, which means cutting down or breaking down fat, while also increasing lipogenesis, which is the creation of new fat. And we know that when we eat carbohydrates, insulin is going to be released to deal and manage with the blood sugar increase. So the assumption is since you're eating carbohydrates, insulin is going up. If you just avoided the carbohydrates, you wouldn't gain fat, but not so fast. The increase in insulin isn't made to make you gain weight or prevent you from losing weight. When insulin is present, your body doesn't stop burning fat altogether. It just does a lot less of it. It slows down the breakdown of fat for new energy, which makes sense because you have a bunch more energy coming in. And this is what caused the insulin to be increased in the first place. Energy is going to be energy no matter where it's coming from. Let's think about this like money for a second. If you have $200 in your bank account and you have $20 worth of cash in your wallet, which would you use to buy something that's worth $10, for example? You would use the $20 in your wallet because it's immediately accessible. It's right there for you to use. It would take way more effort to go to the bank and take out $10 to use for the purchase. And even if you did choose to go to the bank to take out the money, you would still have $210 overall to use for that purchase, regardless of where you got the money from. Your ability to lose weight is certainly not dependent on insulin levels, and you're not required to eliminate carbohydrates from your diet in order to lose weight. And carbohydrates aren't the only macronutrient to be mindful of, let's talk about protein. Even if you did cut out all the carbohydrates from your diet, your body would still secrete insulin. And that's because carbohydrates aren't the only thing that stimulate insulin in your body. It's a little known fact that eating protein stimulates insulin just like carbohydrates do. And eating low carbohydrate will keep your blood glucose levels lower, but whether you eat more carbohydrates or more protein, insulin is still gonna be present. But if insulin was the main reason behind losing weight, wouldn't it make sense to cut out protein from our diets as well. It would make sense, but you definitely do not want to do that. Getting enough protein is a key piece in everyone's diet, especially if you're trying to lose weight and body fat. Protein is very important when trying to lose body fat mass because it allows you to spare the muscle mass that you already do have. It burns the protein going in instead of the protein that you already have. And it's more satiating, so it'll allow you to feel fuller faster, which will mean you'll end up eating less calories overall. And relating to insulin, studies have shown that eating more protein and having an increased amount of insulin actually makes people less hungry. They feel more satiated and therefore eat less food. So insulin can actually help you suppress your appetite and be more successful when it comes to weight loss. Now the elephant in the room here when it comes to insulin, insulin resistance and weight loss is going to be calories. When it comes to weight loss, you definitely don't have to worry about keeping your insulin levels really low or even the fact that you're insulin resistant. What's going to be most important here is keeping a close eye on your overall calorie intake because that's what's gonna do most of the heavy lifting. In order to lose body fat and lose weight, you need to be ingesting less calories than you're burning so that your body taps into your fat stores for energy. And that's what's gonna make up the difference. From this difference, there's no real right way or wrong way to make up the energy when it comes to macronutrients. Yes, you need enough protein, but how you distribute the calories coming from carbohydrate and coming from fat usually comes down to personal preference, exercise levels, starting habits. It's really based on the individual. And based on what we've discussed earlier, you don't need to feel like the only way to lose weight is to go on a really restrictive, low carbohydrate diet. It doesn't work like that. It may work for some people, but at the end of the day, it's not because of the carbohydrates. My best advice is to have a diet that's higher in protein because that'll prevent overeating. And then balance out the rest of your calories with carbohydrate and fat. Keeping in mind that fat typically is going to have more more calories per gram. It's more dense when it comes to calories, nine calories versus four. But also these values should be based on personal preference. If you enjoy eating low carbohydrate, you actually like it, it's easier to stick to for you, that's what you should go with. But it's not a necessity. Additionally, exercise is gonna be important. Making sure that you're doing resistance training at least two to three times per week, which will help you retain the muscle mass that you already do have.
have and exercising generally so you're burning more calories. So the bottom line is if your overall goal is to lose fat, you'd be better off managing your overall food levels than paying too much attention to insulin and not feel pressure to make carbohydrates the enemy because that could in fact make things harder. So with all this about insulin and carbohydrates, it's important to remember that insulin resistance is not preventing you from losing fat or making you gain weight. And if anything, it's actually weight gain that causes insulin resistance in the first place. And this weight gain happens if you're consistently in a calorie surplus. And if you're trying to lose weight, eating in a calorie deficit is what's gonna help you lose fat. And that's because this calorie imbalance will cause your body to tap into your own energy stores regardless if you're insulin resistant or not. Many studies have looked into the connection between insulin resistance and the ability to lose fat, and they've never really found a connection. Varying weight loss data between people that are at different levels of insulin resistance show that you can lose weight while being insulin resistant, and there's no real relationship between insulin levels and weight loss results. It may be easier to point the finger of blame towards insulin resistance for being overweight, but overnutrition and consuming too many calories is what's keeping people overweight and making them gain weight. Once you're able to lose weight, insulin resistance will typically decrease, and that's again because weight gain is probably what prompted insulin resistance in the first place. So if you're looking to lose weight, a calorie deficit is the answer is gonna help you lose fat, but also decrease insulin resistance as a result. Now, if you're really serious about starting a nutrition coaching business, the next thing I'm gonna have you do is check out this video I've linked up right here. If you came here to learn more about carbohydrates, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. I'm explaining the truth about carbohydrates and weight loss. You're gonna learn all about it right here. So check it out now and I'll see you in the next video.